Hi guys, this is Ashuka, and today we're going to talk about application state, state service, and in proc and out proc. Hope you enjoy it. So when you talk about application state, usually the concept of application state is not related to cloud, but it's more of related to ASP.NET. So what exactly happens is how we're going to maintain a state or like a user is traveling, traveling to web server or getting a request and how we're going to persist them. So here is, here is an example of the same scenario of how we actually save a state of an application. So it can be a .NET application on, or any other application irrespective of anything. But we would be taking an example of ASP.NET application how it maintains its state okay so here we can see that here we have client one and client two client one is accessing accessing certain site where where the laptop and client two is accessing where desktop it doesn't mean if it's a SaaS, SaaS software or something he's just accessing a domain it can be a google.com or any other services so when it comes wherever this particular site like google.com is it is hosted on a web server then it would have if it's a windows server then it would have is which actually accepts a request and how exactly the http uh, life cycle or you the life cycle if you want to read that would be more interesting how actually a request comes to uh, a windows server and how it is tackled and how a request is served with the response so here you can see the client one and client two makes a request so whenever a client one makes a request, he just logs in. If it's a gmail.com, he just logs in and he says set up a session or he stores his session uh, for the session variables like the username or his credentials or the his host machine from where he tried to log in or the country name where he tried to log in. What we stored in a state in a particular memory or called as in, in an application pool, uh, which is, you know, which is specifically uh, reserved for a specific applications which are running on this particular web server so the yellow line shows the sessions sessions how they get stored so when you go deep and try to understand what exactly would happen internally into it like this is a web server same there's a web server having an asp.net application installed it and that will have an app domain the app domain is nothing like it, it would be like application pool and that application pool would have total HTTP lifecycle. So the HTTP lifecycle would have the HTTP runtime, and then it would have context HTTP context, which will have HTTP request and response. The area or the memory allocation where actually the objects would be created for each and every request which comes, or the threads or the processes which comes, uh, f f comes for each and every request. You can see there are two contexts which have been created here one in above, one in below. So the various clients, client one, two, and three makes calls over the internet to the IS web server. That web server would be maintaining an ASP.NET or app pool to maintain the sessions. Like I said, it would persist. It can persist any uh, little amount of data like username or the country he travels or the IP he, tried, he made a call to the service. So that what happens is like if this particular IS web server, obviously it would, give a response to the, the response to the request which came from client one or two or three then it need to know the client ip from where the call was made made so those kind of details can be persisted in a web server in a apple so application state when when it initially start the asp.net application started uh, saving simple variables like usernames or the email ids like that so it would be like a user comes accesses email.com then he would store the username password in the application state so you can see that the username passwords are colored in black in green green blue color and they are stored in a web server they just store a simple variable so like you can see when i'm uh, when the ishoga is accessing his own email so that he can see you can see that the issue guy at gmail.com it can be persisted over a session and even a multiple tabs a customer uh, uh, multiple tabs the issue guy opens uh, he will he won't feel any uh, difference in that because 
uh, that particular variables in his own system in his own desktop and it's persisted locally irrespective of what browsers uh, what browsers it's accessing since it's if it's a google chrome then you can say that this is application state the state it's stored in application pool then you can say that the gmail.com uh, would you know like would have its own managed uh, managed application pool where this object would be stored or this username or sessions would be stored and that the, the data can be fetched. If the same if you do try logging with the Internet Explorer, it won't work because the application pool for the Internet Explorer would be different than the Google Chrome since these both are two different applications. So after after like pushing people started pushing simple variables, they started pushing com complex calculations on the on, on the local disk like 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 when when i try to edit uh, the, like videos for you uh, for you the on the video codecs or the uh, you know the resolution changes or the complex calculations like if i uh, uploaded uh, hd quality of uh, videos then that need to be uh, you know converted into uh, lower size or lower resolution videos so those complex calculations can be done on you know local disks or local SQL storages which have been stored on my uh, on my particular service on my particular desktop itself or on web server itself so when i do this particular complex calculations that the complex calculations would be stored like the resolutions everything the codec changes the resolution changes uh, or the video encoding would be done and that can be stored on a disk it can be few few mbs or it can be gbs but these complex calculations can be stored on local disks and then you know it can be returned once that particular process is over like in certain cat cam softwares like where high resolution graphics uh, graphics softwares high resolution graphics softwares where actually you need uh, you need to you need to uh, you need that applications need to uh, calculate resolutions or the pixels or the or the graphic graphics with graphics pixels which need to be allocated on a screen or something that those particular calculations would be moved onto a local disks and the calculations would be the results would be returned back and that would be that can be plotted or the pixels would be written the output of the pixels calculations would be written and the calculations output would be used to display a certain figure or something on a cat game website so what happens is like when you trust like we are trying to persist state on on machine or local so what happens when we try to persist on different azure resources instead of local instead of local resources like this particular web server instead of we are getting calls from various servers you know and the same instances of applications are running on different different web servers or they can be the different websites which are trying to host which are trying or getting accessed by the three different users so one particular web server tries to, to host its the hosted state servers in uh, hosted state the application state in a sql server or in a sql azure sql sql azure or the other web server can store in storage or the other server can store is can store the data in queues irrespective it doesn't matter that application state it just depends on application state what kind of data we are trying to store and we can opt any kind of resources where we can store this application state. And the stateless design came into the concepts when uh, after the distributed computing came into the existence in the market. So this is basically used for scalable solutions and the cloud computing had boosted uh, the requirement of stateless designs. So what is a stateless design? Let's take a common scenario like we have an application and which has a which has a UI layer and a service layer. So it's kind of a SOA architecture where the request comes from user to the load balancer. The load balancers are nothing but we have the same instances like this is a web server one, this is a web server two, and this is a web server three. So in order to balance the load of the user coming or the traffic coming to the website would be load balanced across three different web services. Three, three same instances of web services running on three different machines. So let's see about the flow, how it happens. User access, try to access 
I access this particular website using uh, his Android or any other mobiles. So the load balancer, what it do is like, as the web server one was empty or it, it was rela it's in relaxed state, it gives a uh, gives a request to for oh, this particular web server instance one. So the UI layer tackles it, and if the UI layer is kind kind of Gmail software, it will try to track down the uh, it would try to persist the session data and the username or some credentials into its own data. So into its own local disks. You can see that the data is stored in this particular web server itself, local in the local disk of this particular web server. And that the request can go through service layer and then the response can be processed to the load balance or to the user. You can see the data is persisted in a disk, local disk stores username of user one in session one. So, so this yellow, say, the yellow lines are, you can take it as session one which came to the web server one. So what happens like, like when this particular, so you can see that like these are the, 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 the data is stored in the web server one, web server one, that's okay, not a problem. So if the same customers comes again and uh, comes again and the load balances, if the load balances allocates into the same, web server one that's not a problem because already the user was logged in this particular local disk or this particular web server or the credentials of his not credentials his his uh, data is stored in this particular local disk then he doesn't need to log in again he just he would be like his uh, gmail uh, login would be displayed as already logged in and he can use the service take out an example like like if we are storing this particular data locally then it it is called as an in proc saving your data in proc inside the server or it's called as in proc take an example if what we what what happens if this particular data which is stored the session one data which is stored in this particular web server one the total web server collapses so let's see the user one came before and persisted its data in session when he logged in with his previous session but when he tries to log in log into oh, the, the logged into this logged into the application the gmail service he comes to the load balancer and the load balancer finds that the particular like the web service is like the the web service one of the web services the web server one had lost connection or lost network connectivity or the compute space or the CPU is down. So what happens is that these particular web services would give the health report to load balances and the load balances keep on pinging these particular web servers so that the user experience doesn't get lost. So what if it happens is like it maintains the tables and checks that it checks that first whenever the request comes it checks that the web server one is down it's red but the web server two and web server three are still on. So in order to make the SLA or the you know service level agreement you know, make availability of this particular application, it would route the traffic to web server two or three instead of one. So here you can see that example, it routed the traffic to web server three. Here in the blue line, the session is set up and the uh, request and the response comes to user and says that please log in again. But he is logging from the same machine from his own Android or own Android or Windows device or any iPhone devices or a tab, but he is said to be or in the same Chrome web browser in from his own device. But he is said to be he is said to log in again. That's a bizarre situation for a customer. So what happens is like you can see the session. It can't the if the session is stored in a in internal to a particular web server, that session can't be accessed by web server three. So think of a situation if this session would have been stored in some local or common uh, in common, common storage then web server 3 would have an access to it and the user experience would have been maintained. So that's a disadvantage of an in proc storing of application state. Think of application this this application is as uh, like multi-layered but in a hosted in a single instance if the same application is hosted in a different compute instances or resources then what happens 
in that case we will have something called as uh, like internal load balancer with load balancer itself what it would do is like we have layered architecture so architecture distributed architecture what happens the complete ui layers or the compute instances or the virtual machines or the windows server where this ui layers are are uh, are hosted would be under a load balancer and the ips of these particular windows instances the one two and third would be mapped here in the load balancers and the request can come and you know can be distributed among these ui layers compute instances and then there would be ilb the internal load balancer and that the request which would be coming here can go to the service layer of this particular web server stack or or can be can be to different instance and the data can be persisted here so in this what is the advantage of this kind of so this kind of environment is like you can scale the ui layer if the ui demand is more like the people are coming and viewing your data viewing your viewing your website hold very very much then what you can do is like you can instance this particular to so from 3 to 4 or if the service layer is getting uh, loaded you can you can increase or scale up this particular to into six instances or five instances as per the requirement as per the load increases so what is we read about in proc let's talk about out proc so out proc is nothing but we talked right the disadvantage of in proc is storing the session data in a single server or a single instance or a single web instance instead of doing that if you store the same sessions on a state server which is persisted out of this out of this particular web servers or compute instances but can be accessible via this by by these web service instances then the state would be stored in here and if the if a consumer comes and his session is to his session started here earlier the session is stayed here so are stored here and the web server web services can consume each of the application can consume the variables the session variables from this particular state server so what happens is if the consumer comes the user comes again for with the same request with the for uh, accessing the gmail then he doesn't need to relog in again he just the application what it would it would self intelligent and it would go and grab the sessions which for the variables which are stored in the state server and can display the user name and can logged in login the same user even if it is even if it opens a new instance of the same google chrome and logs in with the gmail that's for today please tweet your questions on to the azure get for tweet your questions to the azure guys 007 i'll be happy to respond to it it's turkey in the oven the mashed potatoes bubbling Watch the ball with our family and our friends. We smell the food a cooking and grandpa keeps a looking. Grandma pushes him out of the kitchen again. The little cousins they all zoom screaming loud from room to room. We don't seem to care.